Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, whose care is for all men, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when men doubt the completeness of your power and rebuke any insolence among those who know it. You who are sovereign in strength, judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous man must be kind, and you have filled your sons with good hope because you give repentance for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. O Lord, Lord, you you are are good good and and forgiving. forgiving. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to my voice in supplication. O Lord, Lord, you are are good good and forgiving. forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come. They will bow down before you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds, you who alone are God. O O Lord, Lord, you you are are good good and forgiving. forgiving. But you, O God, are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, O Lord abundant in mercy and fidelity. Turn and take pity on me. O O Lord, Lord, you you are are good good and forgiving. forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus put another parable before the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, 
Then the, weird, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then has it weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel, the servants ask whether they should pull out the weeds that are growing with the wheat. No, the Master says. If you pull up the weeds, you might pull out the wheat as well. Let them grow together until the harvest. What's the point? God steadily forgives our weeds and lets us develop and grow without uprooting us. It's not that he wants to encourage the weeds. It would be better if they weren't there. But he's careful not to pull out our life, along with our faults. This is a radical idea, because you and I think we will be completely condemned if we have sins or faults. Entire ancient cultures base themselves on such a principle that sins cannot be forgiven. If someone harms me or my family, then I have the right, the duty, the obligation to annihilate them since they are bad people. Nothing can be too severe. This is a scorched earth policy, but people are prepared to destroy everything, uproot the entire garden, simply to get rid of the weeds. The heroes in adventure movies illustrate this principle. They fight, man to man, somersaulting across skyscrapers, dispensing bare knuckle blows to the face and spinning kicks to the head, wielding secret weapons and ever new skills. And finally, the bad guy falls over the awful edge of a building, entertaining us with magnificent slow motion shot of his terrified face as he heads for the inevitable splotch. Everybody is relieved and happy. Except, of course, the bad guy who has just gone splotch. Now, just as an exercise, pretend that you are the villain in the above scene. Is there a reason you are committing the crimes that you are? Is it possible that one part of you is going crazy but there is also much good in you, much that could be brought back to life. Maybe deep down you have a voice whispering, I wish I could stop this ugliness and be a better person. If so, you've stumbled upon the point of today's gospel. The crimes you commit don't really agree with your real God-given self. Yes, they are bad like the weeds in the good garden, but they're only a fragment, a part of who you are. You're urged to impress others falsely, to get what you want no matter what, to be lazy, petulant, to steal, or well, fill in your own particular sin. These are never the full description of who you are. Our sins, no matter what they are, do not define us. And this is why God does not rip out the weeds and people. Mixed in with all of the weeds, there is a beautiful garden that God loves very, very much. Imagine Jesus saying from the cross, Father, damn these people to hell forever because of what they're doing to me. Tearing out both weeds and wheat. But instead, he leaves the weeds alone and he says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. Oh, do you have any weeds? Aren't you glad God doesn't rip them out? An example closer to home occurred to me this week 
as people all over the country and the world are preparing to celebrate Mandela Day. Many people in the liberation movement prior to 1994 urged Nelson Mandela to be tougher on white South Africans, but he refused. He even went so far as to encourage the use of an anthem that was inclusive of white, English, and Afrikaans-speaking South Africans. He included white Afrikaners in his cabinet and visited Orania, that funny little town that tries to pretend that 1994 did not happen. He did all of this because he believed it was more conducive to the process of reconciliation and nation building. Did this suddenly make white South Africans less racist? No, it didn't. But I believe that over time, his gentle approach has brought us closer to the ideal of the rainbow nation than any other approach would have. He left the weeds to go among the wheat, and the wheat has thrived, while the weeds, though they are still here, have been diminishing in number, crowded out by the goodness of the wheat. The words of Jesus and his example led to the writing of what is called the Prayer of Serenity. It's been around for a long time, at least since the early 1930s. The first part of the prayer goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. This prayer has been adopted by Alcoholics Anonymous to be said daily by people suffering from addictions. These are people, like you and I, who suffer greatly from the weeds of their lives and are trying gently to overcome them. And so I urge you to be gentle with yourself and also with your brothers and sisters who struggle with the weeds of their lives. It is with love and patience, and yes, even gentleness, that the weeds are removed from our lives. Not with violence or harsh authority. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word, and help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.